This is a B500K. It's big, it's heavy, and it's got over five kilowatt hours of storage, but it's not a server rack battery. Instead, it's the latest battery in Bluetti's ecosystem. It can connect with a host of their power stations and their existing expansion batteries. Bluetti sent me this early unit so I could test it out with the AC300 and AC200L. When I'm finished, I'll share my thoughts, some pros and cons, and hopefully you'll be more informed when you make your next purchase. Let's get started. Before we get started, let me give you a quick walk around of the B500K battery. On the front of the battery are only two items. The first is a power button, and the second is an LED indicator. It's five segments, and it basically shows you the state of charge of the battery. You will note that there's no USB port on the front of this battery like there was on the B300K. There's only two connections on the B500K, and those are located on the right-hand side. Those are the two expansion ports that allow you to connect it to other power stations or additional batteries. The B500K is compatible with B300K, B300, and even B300S batteries, along with the respective power stations that those can connect to. The other side of the battery is just a blank space, so no connections on that side. The back of the battery has a spot where you can connect brackets if you want to use it with this trolley too. I'm using it with the trolley too today so I can spin it around and easily show it to you and have it sitting on top of a custom made stand that I built for it. I will say that this battery is very heavy though. At about 100 pounds, you're gonna need two people to carry it. You may even wanna wait for your delivery person and give them a hand bringing it to your front door. Now let's get on to how it connects to the AC300 and AC200L. Connecting the B500K to the AC300 is a very straightforward process. And it's pretty much exactly the same as with the B300 series batteries. The only caution that I wanna give you is that you have to have the correct battery cable. Make sure that you have the long P090A battery cable. This is the only one that has enough length to connect between the ports on the AC300 and the B500K. You don't wanna end up with the short battery cable, the CA90, I believe. This one is for the Apex 300. P0 to the AC300 to the B500K, P0 you can use either of the two a. battery connection ports. I'm gonna use the, the top one in this case. Plug it in. Slide the locking mechanism. And I'm gonna use the top battery port on the B500. Plugging it in and locking it in place. Now we can turn on the AC300. Actually, it turned on on its own when we connected the battery up. State of charge here shows at 96%, and it's all connected. That's all there is to it. To show that it's working though, I'm gonna connect a space heater to the AC output here and turn it on, and we can see power flowing through the battery, through the inverter to the heater. Let's move our fake plant out of the way. All right. All right, we've got the space heater plugged in. Oh, gotta turn on the AC output. AC output is on. Space heater beeped, it's connected. Space heater's running. And it looks like it's pulling 
about 550 watts right now. And as this warms up, it's gonna pull about 900 to 1000 watts. We're already up to 845 watts. As you can see, running the AC300 off of the B500K, simple process, connecting devices to it is the same as it was if you had a B300 series battery connected. Now let's talk about connecting the AC200L to the B500K battery. Just like with the AC300, you do need the long cable. This is the only one that will reach from the battery expansion port on the 200L to the B500K. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process, but you do have to take into consideration where you're gonna put the two units. The AC200L has its battery expansion port on the left-hand side, whereas the connections on the B500K are on the right-hand side. So you can't stack them and have them both facing in the same direction. The best way to connect them is side by side like I have them here. So you could put them on a shelf or put them on a workbench and connect them together that way. Let me show you what I mean and then I'll also show you what it looks like when you stack them. There's only one battery connection port here. So I'm gonna slide the cable in and of course lock it in place. You can choose either battery connection port on the B500K. In this case, I'm gonna choose the lower one. And again, lock the cable in place. And we're all connected. Now, the B500K is turned on and the AC200L now shows the state of charge of the com combination of both the units. So before it was at about a 59% state of charge and when we connected the battery to the AC200L, the screen jumped up to a 77% state of charge. All right, now let's look at what it looks like when we have the AC200L on top of the B500K battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery. And I'm gonna turn around the B500K. And now we've got the battery connection ports on the same side. Plug in the battery, turn on the lock switch. And again, we're all connected up, showing 77% state of charge on the front of the AC200L. Now that I've got some space over here, this is a good time to plug in the heater again and show that power does run through from the battery to the power station. All right, we've got the heater connected to the AC200L and the AC200L is connected to the B500K. AC power's on, let's turn the heater on. Great, power is flowing. We are getting heat out of the heater. And we're outputting right now just about 700 watts, ramping up to about 900 to 1000 watts where this heater runs. So the connection's straightforward. It works very well, it's pretty easy. And that makes for a great way to expand your AC200L with five kilowatts of additional storage. This might be a good time to mention too that you can connect up to two of these batteries to the AC200L. So you could actually connect up to 10 kilowatts more storage um, to the AC200L. And this is my favorite inverter. It's super efficient and um, it just works great for, for all the things that I use it for. The runtime test I'm gonna show you today with the B500K and AC300 is the same runtime test I've done with all of the other products I've evaluated. So I have some data points on the same combination, but with the B300 and B300K batteries to compare to the B500K. 
To complete this test, I use a 60 watt light bulb. This simulates a small AC load, very similar to my refrigerator's load, and that allows me to estimate how long this combination could run my refrigerator in an extended power outage. To do this test, I plug the light bulb into a watt meter, and I plug the watt meter into a fully charged B500K battery connected to the AC300. I make note of the time, switch on the light bulb, and let the entire system run down to zero until it shuts itself off. I then note how long the whole system ran for, and I use the watt meter to tell me how much energy was output. Let's take a look at the results. During the test, the 60 watt light bulb regularly consumes 58 watts. As I mentioned, I completed this test with the B300 and B300K batteries. The B300 ran for 31.8 hours, the B300K for 30.3 hours, and this new B500K ran for 54.7 hours. Looking at the watt hours output during each of these tests, the B300 and AC300 combo output 1840, the B300K combo 1761, and the combination of the B500K with the AC300 output 3,165 watt hours. Now you may be saying, wait, this is a five kilowatt hour battery. It is. However, the AC300 is not the most efficient inverter running a small AC load. So a good percentage of the battery gets used keeping the inverter turned on while this test is running. While I didn't have time to do a full runtime test between the AC200L and B500K, I can use previous test results to estimate what I think it would be. In the past, the AC200L and B300K batteries have run for 62.8 hours in this test. They output about 3,686 watt hours in that same test. Using that as a benchmark, and the previous test results, I believe that the AC200L and B500K battery combination would run for about 90 hours in this test and output about 5,400 watt hours. 90 hours is over three and a half days of runtime. That would be a great amount of runtime for my refrigerator if we had a long power outage. Now that I've had some time to work with and test the B500K battery, let me share with you what I think are a few of its pros and cons. Starting off with the fact that it's very easy to plug and play with Bluetti power stations. It works with the AC300, AC500, AC200L, and Apex 300. I would expect that Bluetti releases future models that this works with as well. It's also compatible with existing B300 series batteries, like the B300, B300S, and B300K. So you can expand your existing system with the B500K and mix and match it with the batteries that you may already have. It's got a huge storage capacity for what is, I guess, technically a portable battery with handles. Few of the cons. It isn't compatible with other brands so you can only use this with your Bluetti products. The plug and play convenience that Bluetti offers does come at a higher price tag than similarly sized server rack batteries. It's very heavy. At nearly 100 pounds, you're definitely gonna need two people to move this thing around. Okay, here's my final thoughts. The B500K is simple and easy to connect. If portability is your top priority, you're going to need a cart like the Trolley 2 or 
consider the somewhat lighter B300K battery. Finally, the B500K is excellent for a fixed location where you want to quickly add a big 5 kilowatt hour battery expansion to your existing Blue Eddy system. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope this look at the B500K was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content from the Backyard Solar Project. As always, thanks for watching.